You've probably heard of the Arizona bark scorpion, the scariest sting you can take in the entire US. But further south, in the rainforests of Panama, lurks a real monster. Funniest part is we weren't even down here looking for the scorpion. We'd gotten a tip that this ravine was home to a really rare species of super toxic harlequin toad, a species that almost nobody has seen in the wild. We're down here poking around the water's edge and Emilio spots something. So he's like shuffling around the leaves. We both think that it's a harlequin toad and he's finally found one. And then he jerks his hand back so fast that I knew what he'd seen was definitely not a toad. See where it went? It went in there. Oh boy. You're gonna have to dig him out. Where? Um, like he went in this. So he, oh, I see him, I see him. He's right here. Oh yeah, I do see him. Dude, that's Cerro Azul. Holy crap, that's probably one of the worst scorpions, most dangerous scorpions we could have possibly found. Oh my God, it's huge too. No wonder they're so dangerous. It's a venom yield like crazy. Watch out. I know. Okay. Um, yeah, that's 100%. Look at that thing, that's unmistakable. Oh my God. You would not want to get popped by this thing. Nice. This is a really dirty container. But look at that thing. That's probably one of the most dangerous bark scorpions we could have possibly found. We're gonna get this in a much more controlled environment and take a closer look. I think when a lot of people think of dangerous scorpions, the desert comes to mind. And I think in general, we think of scorpions as a desert creature, but scorpions are actually found throughout a lot of the tropics, including the wet tropics, like rainforests. Now, of course, it is true that a lot of really dangerous scorpions do come from deserts, and so do a lot of other really dangerous things. You know, back home in the US, most of our most venomous snakes are found in the Sonoran and Mojave deserts. Our most venomous insect, is found in the Sonoran Desert. You know, it does seem that deserts push animals to become highly venomous, but the super biodiverse tropics kind of have the same effect. See, these potent venoms didn't come from nowhere. These highly venomous animals are so venomous because they've had to evolve this venom to deal with environmental challenges. In deserts, you have a lack of resources. You have a harder time securing food and you wanna make sure that your food is dead when you finally can secure a meal so that it, number one, doesn't fight back and number two, can't escape. The reason why tropical rainforests produce such venomous animals is a little bit different. Instead of it being from a lack of resources, it's actually because of an overabundance of resources. There's so many things living there that competition is unimaginably fierce. Instead of having super potent venom because you only get to eat once a month, you need this highly potent venom to make sure that nothing steals your kill, and you kind of need it to make sure that nothing can eat you. Where deserts around the world have produced many of the most venomous creatures in the world, the inland taipan in Australia, the six-eyed sand spider in South America and Africa, these rainforests also have produced a ton of super venomous creatures. The Brazilian wandering spiders are the most venomous spiders in the world and they come from this very same region so it makes sense that there'd be toxic scorpions here as well what i've got right here is probably one of the most terrifying arachnids you could possibly find in the central american rainforest this is a thick-tailed scorpion which is the most dangerous scorpion in all of panama look at that thing move it's a huge huge scorpion almost the size of the desert hairy scorpions really think oh well spencer it's a it's a big scorpion right the bigger the scorpion, the less dangerous it is. But in the case of these thick-tailed scorpions, that is not true. You can see they do have relatively small claws compared to their body. So that old saying is true, that the smaller the claws, the more dangerous the scorpion. But look at the size of that tail. When these guys get their name is the thickness of that huge, huge tail. So not only is their venom extremely toxic, but they are packed with a ton of it. This sting is bad. To put it in perspective, You've probably heard of the Arizona bark scorpion. I would take 10 stings from an Arizona bark scorpion before I took a sting from this thing. The thick-tailed scorpions light your nervous system on fire, basically causing your nerves to overstimulate. And from what we can tell, the venom from this genus particularly affects the rhythm of the heart. So when you're stung by this scorpion, you're gonna have searing pain throughout your entire body, but it's also gonna make you very, very sick. Fever, profuse sweating, 
And if the heart failure doesn't kill you, the fever and water loss probably will if you're in the bottom of a ravine in this super hot and humid Central American jungle. Like people don't realize, I think, how bad some of these envenomations can be if you're far from help. You know, if you're close to an air-conditioned lodge or something, most healthy adults could probably sleep off a thick-tailed scorpion sting. But when I tell you that getting into this ravine was one of the most difficult hikes of my life, I don't think that it would be possible for either of us to get out of this ravine while also dealing with the effects of this venom. These scorpions are seriously, seriously dangerous. The venom of this scorpion is a potent neurotoxin. It's gonna be attacking the central nervous system, typically, of its prey. This particular species lives in such remote areas that it's not considered to be the most deadly scorpion in Panama, simply because it's just not killing people. People are hardly ever seeing it. In fact, the people who live in this biological research station had no idea that this one was even here. There's this kind of misconception with a lot of animals that are venomous that the most venomous is the one that kills the most people. But if we applied that to things like snakes, then the actual most venomous snake in the world would be considered the least venomous snake in the world because the inland taipan has never killed anybody. Just because this hasn't killed anybody does not mean it's not dangerous. It is packed with one of the most potent neurotoxins in the arachnid world, beaten out only by the wandering spiders. Now, of course, if you're, if you're a longtime viewer of the channel, you've probably seen me handle some really dangerous stuff before. Spiders that are known man killers, some of which that don't even have anti-venom. And the biggest reason for that is number one, Spiders are way easier to read than scorpions. The first rule of handling anything is if you are not willing to take a bite from the animal, you shouldn't be handling it. The second rule is if you're not willing to take a bite from the animal, but you're going to handle it anyway, you need to be pretty darn sure you know how to read that creature's behavior. I have studied a lot of spiders. I have worked with spiders for years, but scorpions, scorpions are a lot more like centipedes. They're more cryptic. They're more skittish. They're harder to read. It's entirely possible that this scorpion would be totally safe to handle. But if it did decide to pop me, we are hours from anybody who could help me. Thick-tailed scorpion stings are treatable, but in the time it would take for me to get to the hospital, it would probably be already too late. If this scorpion was like the main thing that we'd come here to look for, I might roll those dice. But since we have a lot more targets here in this rainforest, risking a sting with this scorpion is just not worth it. This guy's comfortable here on the bark, and if he's comfortable, I'm comfortable. And right now, as you can see, he's calmed down. That's exactly how I want him. This is one of the few, few arachnids that would truly stress me out. Scorpions have a lot more erratic behavior because they're a fairly nocturnal group of arachnids and they're not as inquisitive as spiders. You can see there, he does have eyes, but those eyes are really only for distinguishing the light from dark. These guys are completely nocturnal. The only reason we were able to find him during the day is we actually disturbed him while looking for super rare harlequin toads. I'd actually wager to guess that this might be one of the few things that could eat a harlequin toad simply because it's not really eating them whole. It might be able to eat around the poison glands simply because they will sting their food and then chew it up bit by bit. Let's take a look at the anatomy of this creature really quick. It's one of the things that while they're creepy, I think they're absolutely fascinating to look at. One of the most primitive, one of the most ancient arthropods in the entire world. There were scorpions conquering the surface of the earth before there were even trees growing. These guys have been terrorizing the surface since hundreds of millions of years before dinosaurs walked the earth. And you can even see it in their appearance. That armored plating looks like something out of a science fiction movie, but it has served them incredibly well. These scorpions have remained fairly unchanged in most of their time on this planet because they're a super effective invertebrate predator. What we've learned by studying the things that eat insects, for example, is that most of them are venomous because it's a super effective tool for subduing insect prey, and this is no exception. But that's not the only amazing and also terrifying feature that this little guy's armed with. Look at those claws right in the front. Now, of course, they're not the big meaty claws of the Epistacanthus that we've seen or the desert hairy scorpions back home, but they can still give you a pretty, pretty nice pinch. The trick with these claws is they actually serve two purposes. They're not just to grab onto things. These scorpions will usually grab prey and then just kind of hold it still long enough to deliver a fatal sting, 
but they can also use them to understand their world. If we look closely, those claws are actually lined with tons and tons of hairs. And while they're not the same kind of hair that like you and I have, these are actually like sensory organs that protrude from inside their exoskeleton, functioning as an extension of their nervous system. Those hairs pick up tons of tactile and chemical information about the scorpion's environment, which help this amazing predator understand its world. After dark, it's crawling out from under rocks or leaf litter, and it's using those claws as its like nose. And it's smelling around for insects, small lizards, small frogs, basically anything that it can overpower and eat. These guys are not picky eaters and they are pretty freaking gnarly. That is one impressive scorpion. Definitely gets your heart racing a little bit to be this close to any of the Tataya species because they're just so freaking gnarly. But I'm glad he's calmed down. That is one heck of an awesome scorpion. You know, I think people accuse me sometimes of overhyping the venom of animals because it gets more clicks or gets more views. But the truth is, even though I work with venomous creatures regularly, I know that for most people, when you encounter a venomous spider or a venomous scorpion or a venomous snake, it's not really another day at the office. It's a pretty stressful encounter, even if you like those animals. You know, it's easy for us to feel fear around things we don't understand. And something like a creepy crawly creature that has a deadly venom can be pretty frightening for most people. There are still venomous animals that make me nervous after years of doing this. And I think it's important to respect the chemical power of these creatures. That being said, these creatures' venom is what makes many of them so special. You know, how crazy is it that this scorpion, it's a big scorpion, right? But it's still a very small animal, potentially has a venom that is strong enough to kill me, a grown human who is many thousands of times larger than this scorpion is. This scorpion doesn't need powerful claws or huge biting force to survive in the rainforest it calls home because it's equipped with such a magnificent chemical weapon. I'm not here to tell you that this scorpion isn't dangerous. It absolutely is. But if we respect them, we can actually come to find that these venomous creatures are actually some of the most interesting wildlife on our planet. And the world of venom gets even cooler from here. Probably the most feared venomous creatures are venomous snakes. But have you ever actually seen what snake venom can do to you? In this video right here, I performed an experiment with cottonmouth venom to show you exactly what happens when one of these snakes bites you. I'll tell you this much, it's pretty gnarly. So hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.